Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, you two. <laughs> How everybody doing? I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. And today's topic is going to be about ambition. The girl say he don't have enough ambition for me. So we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it, okay? So um, I'm giving everyone a chance to log in, of course. Um, this topic is going to be one of those that I, I don't necessarily want it to trigger you, but I want you to look at it from a different perspective. That's what I want you to do. Especially my ladies who are between the ages of 21 and I'll say 27. I'm going to say 21 to 27. I want you to look at it from just a different perspective. Because somewhere we have been misinformed that we wake up, we grow up, and the minute we turn 18, which is technically the beginning of adulthood, that by 21, 25, 27, we have it all together. Especially us holding men to these standards that we have set in our minds. Okay? Far too often, I talk to people who are dating Young ladies who are dating. Now, this is the thing. I'm talking to the young ladies who are dating today. Young ladies. Meaning, my ladies who are... I'm going to be generous today and say 35 and younger. I really want to say 30 and younger, but I'm going to say 35 and younger. Because I just think once you get to 35 and you touching 40, it's a whole different ball game because... You've been an adult for about 20 years now when you get to 40. So that means it's a different set of standards, right? But when we're talking about young adults between the ages of 21 and I'm going to stretch it to maybe 35, I just think it's a, uh, I just think that somewhere we have been given unrealistic expectations concerning what we feel like success should be. Okay? All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say 35 and younger. That's who this message is going to primarily be for today. And the reason I say this is because when I'm talking to younger women and they are dating, especially people who are in their age group, they have very unrealistic expectations about what these people should have acquired in life thus far. If you turn 18 and you have graduated from high school and I'm going to give you two years of some type of post-secondary education, some type of trade, some type of associate's degree, because a lot of people, they don't make it to the bachelor's level. Most times they would at least get an associate's or they would at least get some type of trade or something like that. So by this time, I'm going to say you 21, 22 years old. If you 25, you may have graduated college. You might not have graduated college. I don't know. But what I do know is at 25, I cannot expect you to have your whole life together. I can expect that you are probably not driving in your dream car at 25. I can expect at 25 that you possibly may have a roommate. At 25, I can expect your bank account not to be just overflowing with a surplus to where you can take care of my household and your household. I want to talk realistic because, see, when I'm meeting women who are in the age group 
of 21 to 25, 30, whatever. A lot of times by this time, we didn't have at least one or two children. We've had relationships that we thought was going to turn into something that didn't. And the end result might have only been a baby. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to set this up because I'm talking about the average woman. The average woman have children. And that's just the truth. The average woman that is out here dating has children. And I'm trying to, I, and I'm setting this up like this because I want you to be able to compare and contrast. Okay. You over here, you possibly have a child or two. More than likely, he might have a child or two from relationships that did or didn't work out. That You know, that didn't work out. So I'm going to give you two children and I'm going to give him two children. And I'm going to say the child between the ages of 23 and 28. You got two children. He got two children. I'm about to line this up because I want you to see how things are different for women and men. So when y'all are saying that these men, y'all, these men are fishing or y'all fishing, everybody in the, in the pool and he catch you or you catch him or whatever. And then you get him. You be like, oh no, uh -uh, throw that one back. Uh -uh, I don't want that one. A lot of times y'all throwing back good ones. That's what this video is about. A lot of times y'all throwing back really good men. Okay. You got two. He got two. A lot of times. And this is this what this about the hurt. Women have access to resources that a lot of times men do not have access to. You're able to set yourself up a little bit different than he's able to set himself up. In in during this time frame, 23 to 28. If you start struggling with food, you can go apply for some assistance. You need some help with some child care, you can go apply for some assistance. You need help with some housing, you can go apply for some assistance. You can go apply for some child support. You can go apply for some Medicaid, for medical insurance. You have all of these avenues to go and get help. When we're dealing with a man, Who's between the same age group? They got the same responsibility that you got. He don't have no avenues to go apply for nothing because he understands that when he go down there and put his name on the application, a lot of times he's going to be denied. A lot of times men are not going to even go apply because they know how that breaks them down as a man to have to go and apply for a certain level of assistance, especially being a single man. Because most times single men don't apply for housing. They don't qualify for it. They don't apply for food stamps because they don't qualify for it. So the thing is, when you're looking at these men and you got your nose tooted up in the air because they ain't on a level that you feel like they should be on at this point in their life, you got to take a look at yourself and look at all of the resources that you had to be able to get yourself to the level that you were able to get yourself. He didn't have those resources. I wanted to lay that foundation out first. Okay? Girl meets guy. Girl likes guy. Guy has been on his job He's, he's 28. He's been on this job for about three, four years now. Really enjoys what he do. For whatever reason, his job has never hired him on full time. But they pay him decent. We know minimum wage is what, $7.25 right now? Right? $7.25? So, suppose his job is paying him twice the amount of minimum wage. I'm going to say... $14, $15 an hour. And because they don't offer their staff benefits packages, they only have them working between 32 and 35 hours a week because they don't want to have to label them as full-time to be able to have to offer them a benefits package. 
right? So guys working a job, making about $30,000 a year. That's guy, right? Guy has no public assistance. More than likely he has children. I'm going to say he paying child support for him. He taking care of his children. His job is flexible. They allow him to be able to attend his children's games. Because he is working 32 to 35 hours a week, he's able to go help out and coach the team in the evening time. He's able to help get the children off the bus every now and then. He's able to make himself available because he got these options available to him, meaning that he's not working 40 hours a week plus overtime. Girl meets guy. And this is the guy's situation. He is working 32 to 35 hours a week. He's making about $15 an hour. And he's been on this job for a couple of years. He loves his job. He loves what he do. He loves the company that he works for. He has no interest in changing and going to a job that's going to pay him $20 an hour. He has no interest in doing anything other than what he's doing right now. Because he's good where he at. You met him. And he good. He's he has the time and he's a and he has the freedom to be able to be a parent, to be involved. Girl comes in and say, you know what, I really like you, but I just don't feel like you're doing enough. You done been on your job three, four years and you still ain't full time. You either need to go get a second job or you need to go find another job. Because I like you, but I just feel like you ain't ambitious enough. Sweetheart, all I want to ask you is, who is this ambition for? Is this ambition because you want to see him do better and be better for whatever reason? Or is this ambition for you? Who is this ambition for? Is it because... You want him to be able to take care of his house and yours? Because mind you, y'all just dating. Exclusively dating. You already had your table set up when you met him. He got his table set up over here. You got a table and he got a table. Y'all are exclusively dating. I had to tell somebody this last week. When you are exclusively dating, it only means that you have eliminated the other people to be able to focus on getting to know each other better. Exclusively dating does not obligate you to financial responsibility to each other. That's not what exclusively dating is. So, this young lady sends me this message and says, "Oh, I can't I can't work. I can't I can't work in a night with him because I just feel like he ain't ambitious." I just feel like in three to four years, if you see that you ain't moved up at your job, in three to four years, you see they ain't made you full time, in three to four years, you still in the same place, I just feel like you ain't ambitious enough. Sweetheart, I just want to know, you want this person to leave where they are, I don't necessarily like to use the term comfortable. But they're doing what they enjoy. They like getting up, going to their job every day. You want them to leave that to go do something else for what? See, the thing is, what you got to understand, and you will learn this in wife school, so I'm not going to go into too much. I, I don't like to go too in depth for my ladies who are going to be attending wife school. Is men and their jobs are closely aligned to one another. Men and their jobs are closely aligned to one another. You have a much better man when he enjoy what he does. If a man gets up every day and goes to a job or a career or whatever it is, and he's doing what he enjoys, he's a much better person overall. Sometimes y'all got to learn how to let people be. And you got to let God come in and create the change. You got to let God uh, position these people and put things in their lap. 
Instead of you trying to be the force that's pushing, pushing, pushing. Because to men that looks like nagging, to men that looks like they can't please you, to men that looks like they are not enough for you. And when a man feels like he is not enough for you, he don't want to be around your ass. He want to be anywhere other than with you because he can't satisfy you. So I want to try to get out this whole he ain't ambitious because that is a way of putting a person down, whether you know it or not. It's not that this person is not ambition. ambitious. Ambitious, y'all, okay. Excuse me, y'all. I don't I didn't got warm up in here. <laughs> when I first got here, it was kind of chilly up in the studio. So I I um I dropped. I, I I upped the temperature and I dropped it. I upped the temperature because it was kind of nippy. But anyway, what happens is these people feel like they can't please you. You got to understand that people stay at certain jobs for certain benefits other than monetary. For example, if this person was to go and change their job and they really enjoy being able to go to their kids' games because the job that they're working at now, it allows them to go to the games. The job they're working at now, it allows them to be able to go out there and help and coach from time to time and actually be involved in their children's lives. The job that he's going to may be way more demanding and say, oh no, you can't have these weekends off because we need you here. And I understand you like going over there and coaching uh, football, basketball, and baseball for Lee Junior because Lee Junior play everything all year long, but we need you here. How happy do you think that's going to make this man? A lot of times, y'all push men so much and they, and they make decisions that they know they're not going to be happy with. But they make these decisions for you. And then what they do is resent you for them decisions. They resent you. Who is the ambition for? Is the ambition because you want to see them be better? Is the ambition is because, you know, is it really for them? Or is this ambition because you want to live above your means? Is this ambition because you want to live on this side of town? Is this ambition for you want to be able to upgrade your car and, and, and have a car note and not have a cash car? Who is this ambition for? That's all I want to know. Who the, who the ambition for? I, I, want, the, I want answers. On this feed, I want answers. Who is the ambition for? Because you want to be able to get another wig? Because you don't want to be able to go get one of these $9.99 ponytails from the house store? Who the ambition for? I'm trying to teach you how to draw your man closer to you. Not push him away with your petty grievances. Because I promise you, a lot of the things that you are asking for are things that when you really take a look at life, they're really not that important. The things that you want to be able to get the one, what the shoes called the ones, the, the cute little silver and black shoes that everybody been advertising for the last week that everybody just had to have. There's nothing wrong with wanting nice things. I had to tell my daughter this last night. I say, Taylor... There is nothing wrong with wanting nice things, but you want nice shit every day. When do you not come to me talking about what you want? Do you understand that when you become an adult, that you're not going to be able to keep this up? Sometimes we got to put some shit on a wish list. Because everything that come out and everything that you see, you ain't got to have it. Who is this ambition for? This woman literally broke up with a really great guy. And these were her words. He is a great guy. Because he didn't meet her standards. 
I had to learn this. I had to learn this. I had to learn this. Lord knows I had to learn this. I can be a workaholic at times. To the point where Spencer have to stop me. And, and, and kind of let me know that, hey, you got a family here. Hey, we understand you trying to get it. But you got a family here. And at that point, I know that, okay, Sharon, it's time for you to pull back. It's time for you to pull back. I am a workaholic. My grandfather is a workaholic. I, I ain't stole it from nowhere. If you know Walter Wells, you know he will not sit down. From the moment my eyes open, the wheels get to turning. But just because that is my character and my personality, I can't look down on the next person because they choose to take their time and spend it differently. I had to learn that every moment that I'm woke don't mean that I got to be working. I just want you to understand that when you're dealing with people and they in certain age groups, you got to allow them to be able to find their way. And you can't come in putting people down because certain things are a little more important to them. Their time is a little more important than the bag. It's certain things you can't get back. And what this young man understands is I can't get these moments back with my child. I can't get these moments back where they in Little League and I can't never come to their games. I can't get these times back. I want my child to be out there on that field running that ball and know the data right there. But the thing is, you got your turn over here and they daddy ain't all that involved. So you don't even understand what it means to, for, for a, a parent to really want to be involved because you ain't never seen it. Because your, your children, they daddies ain't really that involved. But you're willing to let this really good person go who can be an asset to his, to his children and yours because they ain't working five more hours a week to be classified as full-time. If that ain't the most foolish shit that I never heard, that's plum foolish. Because this, and, and this is what I'm going to end it with. Because you looking at this person... That's making about fifteen dollars an hour. Who working so say part time? If they was making seven twenty five an hour and forty hours a week, somebody do that math for me. Seven twenty five and forty hours a week. This this full time employment minimum wage. Somebody somebody grab their calculator right quick and do seven twenty five times forty hours a week. I know that that ain't nothing but about $15,000 a year. But they working full time. They working full time. This person, thank y'all. This person not working full time, but guess what? They doubling the amount of a minimum wage worker. This That full time job that this person go to that they make a minimum wage is only paying them about $15,000 a year. This person making $30,000 a year. Bitch, if you were smart, what you would understand is, I got this over here right here, my table. What I'm bringing to my table. He got what he bringing to his table. We are exclusively dating. If this shit works out between me and him, then guess what? I'm combining what I got at my table and he combining what he got at his table and that shit coming together. I don't know nobody that can't use an extra $30,000 a year in their household. You you show me a bitch that can't use an extra $30,000 a year in their household. And I'm going to show you a bitch that's lying. Show me somebody who can't use an extra $30,000 in their household. See, y'all not looking at the bigger picture. See, when I'm talking to y'all, y'all say y'all want to be wives, y'all want all this here shit, whatever. Y'all saying that this is what y'all want, a couple of forevers. My mind is always thinking future. Future. Y'all looking at right now. Oh, he ain't 
ain't he he ain't ambitious. He been at his job three, four years. Yeah, but guess what? He been there long enough to establish a work history. If y'all combining what y'all got together and y'all decide to go buy a house, they'll say that he got some stability. But you worried about how many hours the person putting in a week. Because that's what's important to you. Because you feel like he got all this extra free time. He should be doing something other with his time other than being a parent. Somebody gonna teach y'all some coming. Y'all gonna y'all gonna get off this city girl shit. Y'all gonna get off it. Y'all gonna get off it. Understand that that shit is for your entertainment. That shit is for you to turn up in the club one good time. But that is not what you should be basing your life on. You cannot expect a person who ain't even 30 years old to be out there making 50, 60, 70, 80,000 dollars a year. Plant workers do that, but guess what? They live in a fucking plant. They put their life on the line every time they clock in. Because at any moment, that bitch can blow up. That's why they pay them so well. Because they go to a high-risk job. Yeah, offshore workers make good money. But guess what? He ain't never at home. He only home fucking seven days out the whole month. So you still, you, you got the money. But you still by yourself. But you can't go get no regular old average Joe. Who... Got a job who understands certain principles in life because average Joe just ain't ambitious enough for you. Well, if it's all that, baby, why you can't just work your job and you go sell you some eyelashes or, or, or some, uh, what all the women sell of that shit? Uh, eyelashes and what else they sell? Hair. Go get you some eyelashes and hair to sell on the side. You be talking, you want to talk about ambition for somebody else. What are you doing? For, for if you need extra. But the thing is, y'all see people on the internet traveling every other month, and you feel like you gotta travel every other month. Y'all see people on the internet swapping out their wig every week. So you want to swap out your wig every week. Y'all are literally allowing the internet to drive your mentality about people in relationships. For real. You letting the internet have you plumb damn crazy. Believe half of what you see on the internet. You don't understand what these people going through to live like this. You don't understand the certain struggles. That, and you don't even understand how half of that shit is given to them. To advertise. Oh no, Sharonda. I can't go and, uh, mm -mm, girl, I got the, uh, have, I got to shop out of this particular store. I got to shop at this particular boutique. Well, guess what? I got on a little Walmart dress right now with a little Walmart jacket with a little half stuff ponytail. And I make money. Good money. But I'm very grounded. I got sense. And people that know me personally, they know that I don't like to spend on bullshit. They know that I do not like to spend. I, In other words, if I spend it, I want to know that a return going to come on it. People that know me personally. Mm -mm. I'm not going by no ones. Because I, I ain't about to sit around there and have on the same shoe that everybody else got on. I got on, I'm about, to show, I'm about to take it off and show it to you. I got on a little Payless boot. When pay, Payless don't even exist no more. I got on a little Payless boot. I probably be, paid about $20 for it. Mm -mm, I don't spend my money like that. Mm -mm. I be seeing people walk, walking around here looking like they got it. They have the newest, latest, this, this, that, the other, Lord. But then they, they ain't even got no life insurance, Jesus, and got to go set up GoFundMe to bury everybody. We we can be very foolish with our spending as people. For real. 
And that's just the truth. So, ladies, I'm about to wrap this live up. I have been waiting on my FedEx order because I had all kind of stuff that I'm trying to show you all for Steak and Blowjob Day. But my order has been in Tennessee for the last week because FedEx is about a week behind. So with that being said, as soon as it comes, I'm going to be ready to show you. Um, What'd you say? I, I'll go back and read the comments later on. I'll go back and read the comments later on. But, um, I, you know, I just want people to understand that it's nothing wrong with us wanting nice things, but it's nothing wrong with us saving for what we want. And we can't go out there and turn somebody else into a workhorse to be able to provide materialistic stuff with us and then belittle them and say that they're not ambitious. Because that, that's not what I saw when, when I talked to, when I went over everything, I flat out told her, I just feel like he a wise man who understands what's important at this point in his life. You got, the, you got the rest of your life. When your children become adults, you can work as much overtime as you want. But it's certain shit that you can't get back. It's certain times that you can't get back with them. Once they didn't become adults and they didn't left, they gone. But we, we have families and we don't understand that they are the priority. They are the priority. Working is fine, but we have to learn how to live within our means. We have to learn how to live within our means. We do. We don't, we don't do that well. We don't. All right. Oh, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. What you say? Then you become grandparents. <laughs> oh, it's a baby. I, I I done told everybody in my house. Y'all better know what y'all doing. Y'all start having children. Y'all better know what y'all doing. I'm saying that right now because I I'm on the go and I I move around a lot. But um, I I don't. I ain't do good with rocking my own babies. So I don't know how I'll be doing with rocking nobody else's babies. And that's just the truth. <laughs> that's just the truth. But the thing is, I love spending time with my family. I love pouring into them. Yesterday was our family day. If y'all have not watched Judas and the Black Messiah, it is really, really good. Um, we watched Judas and the Black Messiah yesterday. It was Spencer's turn to cook. Yesterday he did wings and salad, but he did like uh, lemon pepper wings, sweet chili wings, hot wings. Uh, he made all different kind of wings. And we had really nice uh, chef salads. And we had some really, really good discussion about all of these organizations that were formed in the 60s and 70s to be able to help and uplift our people, but how the government uh, dismantled all of these organizations. Um, and basically flooded our neighborhoods with all type of uh, drugs and all this kind of stuff. If you waiting on the school to teach your children history, keep on waiting. They didn't do it when I was growing up. We didn't get beyond Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. That's about all everybody knew. But if you want your children to learn history and to know where they come from and to know about their people, you have an obligation to teach it. Oh, and if y'all are history buffs like me, CNN has a really good special going on right now called Lincoln. It is really, really, really good. Um, I've been watching it as well. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, I enjoyed my weekend. I was able to really uh, take that social networking break and uh, really spend time with my family. Any questions, concerns, comments? All right, if you enjoyed the video, my cash app is right there. Make sure you send a tip if you enjoyed it. It's greatly appreciated. Also, my website is right there and my Instagram is right there. I don't have the basket, but I will make one because I'm about to get ready to raffle it off anyway. But I did post a picture of it. I don't have it right here in front of me right now. But anyway, there is a blowjob basket that's going to be raffled off, raffled off for March the 1st. Make sure you are registered. Um, all you have to do is register your email. That's all you have to do. We're going to draw one email address, send them an email, let them know that they are the winner, get their address, and we will be shipping this basket to them so they can get it in time for Steak and Blowjob Day. 
So if you have not registered for my website, my website is below www.dppgstore.com. Make sure you go on and register. This is going to be like the ultimate dick sucking basket. It's going to have any and everything you can think of to suck dick. So if you have not registered, go register. You all be safe. You all be blessed. Make sure that when people see you, you are a good representation of yourself. You want to make sure people see the best version of you. All right. You all be blessed.